Greetings, friends, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! Today, today I'm gonna do something special, maybe. Oh, what's this? Oh, should recover some of this debris. I've been, I've been raining broken spaceship all over the place. And I haven't cleaned up after myself, apparently. Anyway, today I'm gonna do a couple more contracts. I asked at the end of the last episode which contracts I should do first, and someone said, Rescue! Rescue the Kerbal! It's lonely in space! And, and that I will! I will rescue the Kerbal. Uh, I got a Kerbal stranded in orbit of Kerbin. Probably rescue him. Another guy stranded in the orbit of Moon. We'll get to him later. He's he'll he'll be fine. He's got probably video games and some snacks. I hope to keep him occupied. Uh, and we're gonna build an orbital station all at the same time. At least we're gonna try to build an orbital station all at the same time. Behold, this is what I'm gonna use to rescue the guy and get a station in orbit. Isn't it beautiful? First off, these three engines are going to light, but they're going to only be burning fuel from these outer tanks. Remember, it's called asparagus staging. That's why I have these, these little fuel lines, so the fuel from here is draining into the center engine as well. Once those are done with, those will eject and fall, hopefully not destroying the bottom of this. And this engine will just burn this little tank's worth of fuel. Hopefully, hopefully, that will be enough to get us into orbit. Then they'll eject, and then I have another little engine under here. You can see the engine there, called the Poodle, and that's for, for orbit, so when you're out in space it has a lot higher efficiency. I'd probably go over that, shouldn't I? You see these engines? They give you a lot of different information. Max thrust, ASL, max thrust, VAC, and then you got ISP numbers. ISP is like a measure of efficiency. You'll see the Poodle, 350 in a vacuum, but 85 at sea level, pretty bad. Whereas this big engine at the bottom, the Skipper, the skipper, only 320 in a vacuum. See, it's not as good in a vacuum. But 280 at sea level, which is better than the poodle. It also has a lot more power. So you gotta pick which engine to launch with. So I picked the big power one. And which engines to use in orbit, which I picked the, the efficiency one. Uh, this crew storage container holds four Kerbals. They just kind of sit in there, play, play with, uh, you know, games, eat their snacks. And then a command pod for one Kerbal, which means these together have five Kerbals. I need to do that in order to fulfill the contract. I also need it to be able to hold 2,000 units of liquid fuel. And then you'll notice this little thingy up here. What is this? This is another little command pod that will detach from this. It's got a little, a little dock, docking port. Junior, right here. Remember we unlocked those. And then that Kerbal, the guy we rescue, will jump in here detach, and then this will fly him back down to Kerbin, and we can we can rescue him. Because for the contract to be fulfilled, I not only have to pick him up in orbit, like rendezvous and pick him up, but I also have to return him safely to the ground. So hopefully, hopefully this will, hopefully this will work. Well, there's a slight problem. Mass. 174 tons in my launch pad out there can only support 140, so we got to upgrade. If I upgrade, Everything is unlimited. I can build as big of a rocket as I want. Big and heavy. Unfortunately, it takes half my money, but, you know, gotta spend money to make money. Behold! I, I wasn't I wasn't confident it was gonna get off the ground, so I, I slapped on a couple of extra extra solid rocket boosters to hopefully get me off the ground a bit faster. We're gonna we're gonna find out if this can actually fly. I hope. Fingers crossed. I blew like all of my money. I hear the guy, he's coming around the back. Uh, some people try to launch and just meet him when he comes around. I'm not that good, so I'm going to do it the way I do it and just get into orbit and then try to meet up with him. So I'll show you how to do that. Throttled up. Throttled up. You ready? You ready, guys? You ready? Okay, I hope you're ready. If not, too bad. Three, one, go! It's taken off! And it's shaking like mad. Look at that camera shake. One of SRBs! Eject. And go! Alright, we got the apoaps nice and high. I'm just gonna cut off my engines and let us let us coast up to that a little bit. See what happens. Still got plenty of fuel. I guess I was I was freaking out over nothing. Freaking out over nothing. So so's Bob and Bob and Bill. They're also kind of freaking out. They're like, ah, ah, we're gonna die. And just like cool. They're looking at each other terrified. No. Ah. Food, not food. Refuse, trash, rubbish, and junk. It's good to keep those separated, apparently. Where are the snacks? 
probably pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, burn! Let's try to get some horizontal velocity going here. Pretty fast. So far, nothing has blown up. This is this is amazing. Got our apoapsis up near, nearly to that guy's orbit. Well, it's not quite lined up with them, but it's, it's nearly there. Oh, those engines are out of fuel. Goodbye! Nice knowing ya. Thanks for the help. You may have also noticed this is finally being recorded in 1080p. I have decided I should step up the quality a little bit, you know. Try to maximize the awesomeness. Alright, we're coming up on orbital velocity. Oh, ran out of fuel. Uh-oh. Come on, little engine! You can do it! Please don't let us crash into the ground. I don't want to die. This is a very expensive spacecraft. Uh oh, we're going down. We are descending. This is definitely not good. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to burn burn a little upward. Hopefully that'll that'll help slightly. Oh jeez, oh we're in orbit. Oh camera changing. Ah, shut off engines. Now's the perfect time to show you the new thrusters. So check this out. Turn hit R, turns on RCS. And now I can point it in different directions and it'll actually thrust me slightly. It'll actually thrust me slightly. Excellent. Okay, now we're, now we're pointing in the right direction. I guess I'll have Jeb do that. And I'll throttle up a little. Try to get us actually into orbit here. Alright, we did it! We're above above 70. Now, if you take this guy I want to rendezvous with, click him, set as target. It'll give you a couple of extra little things. Alright, and they, these will help you rendezvous. This means descending node and ascending node, 0.4 degrees. That means my orbit is off of his by 0.4 degrees. So I can correct at either of these two points, burning either north or south, depending on which node it is, a little bit, and we can get our orbits to line up. We'll have more of a... a you want zero degrees. Uh, these points, the nodes, that's where our orbits cross each other. 0.4 degrees is not very far off. These red things, these are... Uh, Intersection. Basically, when will we be closest together? And at that point, we will be closest together, meaning a thousand kilometers. That's not what we want. We want to be a lot closer together than that. So we have to adjust our orbit so that eventually we will run into him. And seeing as how we're pretty much similar to him here, I want to burn prograde like so. And what this does is it will extend my orbit the blue, the blue circle is my orbit, the green circle is his. It will extend my orbit out farther than his. And there's a reason for that. At this point, our orbits are really close. But here, our orbits are farther apart. And if my orbit, in general, is farther out than his, it will take me longer to go around the planet. He is a little closer most of the time, so he'll orbit the planet in less time. Which means, he will eventually catch up to me. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment. I want him to catch up to me. They don't have to be that different. I'm going to extend it a little bit more, and then I'm just going to speed up time using the, the time speed up thing. Now, you can kind of watch how your progress is going when you pass this. See, look, target intersection, 836 kilometers. Now, wait until I pass it. See this moved inward? 684 kilometers. We're getting, we're getting quite a bit closer. Okay, he's not quite caught up to me yet, but you see he's a lot closer. So, what I'm going to do is fix this ascending-descending node problem because our orbits are off. So, if you look kind of horizontally, it might be hard to see, my orbit goes below him at the point. So that means I am going to burn uh, north. I'm just going to raise the throttle a little bit. See, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. That's good enough. Close enough to zero. Let's watch how close we're going to be. And... Oh, now he's going to pass me. Okay, so what that means is I got to get around the planet ever so slightly faster. Remember, to get around the planet faster, you have to lower your orbit closer to the planet. And to do that, we burn retrograde. Okay, we're at point in retrograde. Throttle up ever so slightly and try to get it nice and close. See, six, five, four, three, two, one, half a kilometer. You, you don't want to. You don't want to do it down to zero kilometers. If you get it down to zero kilometers, 
Sometimes they end up smashing into each other. All right, we're coming in. We're gonna be there in, in two minutes. So I better explain something to you. This thing here tells you what you're doing or what direction you're going. And you'll see if you click here, it'll change. Orbit, surface, target. Remember, he's our target. So this says, relative to him, we are going 60 meters a second. We want that to be zero meters a second because we don't want him ramming into the ship. We definitely don't want him ramming into the ship. And when it's set on target, if it retrograde, Jeb will burn retrograde of the direction relative to that guy. So there's Hadrox Hulk. So we start burning. Get that relative velocity down to nothing. Five, four, three, two, one. There. Now pretty much just sitting here. At that point, when you're this close, you can transfer over. Oh, it's just, it's just this guy and his little capsule. EVA. All right, let go. Hit R. Engages his thrusters. Look towards and go. Thrust. Goodbye, space debris. Now notice, I only thrust it a little bit, and now I'm just kind of letting him coast. I don't want him coming in too fast. In space, you don't have to hold the gas for too long. You just get moving and then coast. Also, once upon a time, I tried doing this, and I just like went full blast, and I couldn't slow down, and I ended up ramming into the craft and killing the guy, which was totally not what I wanted to do. All right, we're coming in. Okay. Okay. Oh no, oh no. I fly this thing. Crap. And board. Yay, we have rescued him. He is rescued. Oh, here's something cool I didn't show you. The lights. Bing. I put lights on it. I should have had those on before. Now it's time for, for Hard Dock to decouple. Alright, Hard Dock. Are you ready? Let's activate his engine. Try to get him away a little bit. And now it's just standard re-entry. Just burn retrograde. Let's go back to this mode to make sure I'm not going to ram into the space station. Good. Burning retrograde. And there we go. It's periapsis down in the atmosphere. Let's let him land then. Hope he doesn't die. Alright, so this is going to get real interesting. It's at night, so I have I have no idea what's going on. I can't see anything. Ooh, it's pretty. Hey, anyway, Hard Dock here is not a pilot, so he doesn't know what he's doing. He can't fly for crap, apparently. Can't even activate the SAS. Shouldn't that just be a button? I don't know. But, but Hard Dock is going to hang on for dear life, and hopefully, hopefully, this thing is aerodynamically stable and doesn't want to flip around. It looks like it's doing pretty good. So far it looks good. Oh, oh, here comes the sun! I also kind of really, 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 really hope the parachutes don't burn off. That sure is cool looking. That's really pretty looking. Alright, we're slowing down. Over, I can't tell what. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna flash down. There, I'm not gonna eject that. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to save those engines so we can, we can get funds back. Parachute's opening! I really, really hope Hard Dock can swim. Or he's, he's gonna be screwed. Alright, we're coming down. Coming down. And sploosh! We're in the water! And it tips over. Excellent. Of course it tips over. Success! We gained a little bit of science just for returning a vessel from orbit. Nice. Got, uh, wow, 90% of our value back. That's pretty good. That's not bad. And got Hard Dock Kerman, who advanced to level 1 for stranding himself in space and requiring a rescue. So what, what, what do we need? We need... We probably need a pilot, because this guy, this guy can't fly. Here we go. Fairly courageous. Moderate stupidity. That's a good bet. Yeah, I guess. Or should we just go with the bravest one? RD is a little bit brighter. We're, we're going to go with the... We're going to go with the smarter one. So next time, I got to fuel this up. And I'll probably do that on the way to doing another contract. So, who knows? Who knows what contract it'll be? If you have any suggestions, I'll leave them in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, if any questions at all about Kerbal Space Program in general, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them in the next episode. 
Before I go, before I go, I got a question. This person asks, how do I do this? How do I look around the rocket? If you hold the right click, or the right mouse button down and look around, you can use that to kind of position yourself around which which way you want to look. Uh, the V key, the V key will adjust which camera mode you're in. Free mode is kind of free, as the name implies. Orb mode, this mode where it kind of center or kind of makes it so that whatever is north is always up. So north is always up in orbital mode. Ooh, look, you can see the space center. Interesting. This mode is not very useful in space, but when you're flying around in an airplane, chase mode always uh, look in the direction you're traveling. So you can kind of set it to do that in, in space, but I find it most useful when you're flying airplanes. Locked, I think, is just locked on this angle of the spacecraft. So if I point it like this, and I move move the spacecraft around, I'm always looking exactly in the same place, at the rocket itself. Okay, and auto will change. When you're in the atmosphere, it'll be chase mode, probably. When you're in orbit of something like this, it'll be in orbital mode. I think if you fly out and you're not in orbit anymore, I think then it's in... might be in free mode. But yeah, that's the general general controls. And then if you want to zoom in, that's a scroll wheel on the mouse. And it will automatically be looking at the center of gravity of your rocket. It'll always look at the center of gravity. So if you burn fuel, the tanks will get lighter and the camera will actually shift up this way, towards the center of gravity. If you don't want to be looking at the center of gravity, you want to do this, and get sick, that's holding the scroll button down. So you can scroll in and out, also click the center button to do this, and cap position. So if you, if you want to get like an epic shot like this of the rocket and the sun, and not always have the rocket in the middle, you can do it with the center thing. And then look around with the right mouse button. So, hope that helps! So, without further ado, I will see you next time. Bye bye! Bring the goo. No, 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 Try to kill some of that velocity. I call it the table. Maybe I'll kill, I'll kill all my... Kill some horizontal velocity to get more the vertical. The blowy landing legs. I'm gonna do it. Come on, music. Get more intense.